Um, so our next speaker is Dr. F. Jerry Ream, and he is a lecturer in the Molecular Microbial Ecology in the School of Microbiology at University College Cork and a funded investigator with the Synthesis and Solid State Pharmaceutical Cluster. His research, research team study microbial communication systems and the interactions between cells across the kingdoms of life. So you're very welcome, Jerry. That's super. Thanks a bit, Molly. And I'm not sure how anybody could follow Daniel's uh, presentation there because he certainly sold me on virtual reality, that's for sure. OK, so everybody can see this and I'm here to absolutely delighted to be here uh, presenting in this forum and representing the Elevate team here at UCC. So making sense, it's in italics because the students said it, not me, of molecular and cellular biology through experiential and immersive learning. So for many years, I started some of my modules with this painting from the Glucksmann Gallery at University College Cork. And I asked the students, what are you looking at? What can you see in that painting? So invariably they'll say it is biblical. Some will say it's from a very old time based on dress. What they do agree on, it's nighttime. But then you show them more of the painting and all of a sudden, okay, it's not biblical anymore. That was a cactus. And it looks kind of Central America, South America as if it's a party, but they, at least they got the darkness right. I mean, it's nighttime, right? Except it's not, that's a river. And the point here is that for many students accessing molecular and cellular biology, all they're seeing is this glimpse. They see the small part of the image because most of it's invisible, it's abstract. And the challenge for us is to enable them to see that painting fully so that they can understand it fully. And we were very lucky, we were funded by the National Forum back in 2019 to look at ways to bring innovations into teaching and learning here at University College Cork. And I make this point now at the start, it was very much driven by pedagogy, pedagogy and scholarship, not by technology. So we wanted the students to be able to explore. We wanted to look at interactive learning, 3D models and simulations, virtual reality. We wanted them to be able to experience as part of their learning. So micro modules and digitalization skills very much linked with the connected curriculum here at University College Cork. And then finally, to enlighten the students to achieve deep learning, show them the full picture, but not alone the theory, but also how to apply that theory with a capstone experience. Just to show you some of our journey, we begun in November 19. Our prototype was not that net technically advanced. It was a $3 uh, jigsaw, but I'll touch on that in the next slide. We got ethical approval in March 20 and we began surveys with the students and students are very much partners in this, uh, not test subjects, very much partners and it was about co-creation. So we began with pilot surveys and Labster, which is an off the shelf simulation and probably a game changer for us in Elevate was collaboration with Dave Murphy from the School of Computer Science and IT and his MSc interactive media program because we had access to students who could turn our vision as disciplinary experts into a virtual reality experience. As I said, we were very much grounded in pedagogy and a big step for us was the ABC for Learning program, which was a great benefit in integrating VR within our modules. First up were the viral VR simulations, which were then followed by an uh, expansion of the student surveys with a new cohort and the development of the molecular biology simulations that I'll speak of today, finishing in May 21 with the immersive, uh, fully immersive experience. And we're all back into this space again for 2022. And just to point out that much of this was done under level five lockdowns with restrictions on COVID. The prototype we use is very, very simple. It was a $3 blank jigsaw, but what it led us to do was to investigate whether experiential learning and the interactive component is going to be important in the VR simulations. It was a blank jigsaw. You just fill in the parts of a plasmid. If you're wondering what a plasmid is, it's the piece of DNA that enables us to make really important products for health and globally. If you're wondering which ones, think insulin or the COVID vaccines. So the point here was that around the center point, the circle, which is your plasmid, they were the components of the plasmid. Every other piece in the jigsaw is part of the process of production, but not the plasmid itself. And students came back and said, you know what, for the first time I actually get a plasmid, it's sticking in my head what the parts are. The act of doing was going to be very important here. So our core hypothesis from working with the students was that immersive learning approaches can enhance the deep learning experience in challenging and abstract concepts. 
Where's the evidence for that? We're scientists, so we love quantitative data. In the pre-surveys, it was almost unanimous that molecular biology, computational biology, they're challenging because they're invisible. But of course, if we're going to propose that we're going to use virtual reality and an immersive technology to begin to teach this, we need to understand where the students are coming from. And while they're very, very comfortable in social media, calling themselves either experienced or newbies, it's a very different story when it comes to virtual reality. There, the classification switches to the majority having either no experience or newbies. And we must bear this in mind when we design our simulations and when we integrate them within our modules. So just to show you one of the simulations and what it looks like, to bring you through a tour, this is in the Oculus Quest. This is our co-created, co-created with the students based on their feedback. So first step is to bring somebody into that experience using the microscope just to bring them away from where they are consciously. And they're faced with the plasmid, but the backbone of a plasmid. There are fake pieces there, there are real pieces. They have to decide what the correct pieces are and where to put them. That's the interactive part. Once they've done that and assemble it, there's a simulation that they work through until they're brought back in for assessment then, questions on the operation of those various elements. Once they have that undertaken, they're then back out again where they can explore the actual plasmid itself and then engage in further MCQ. So very much moving from interaction to exploration. The feedback from the students was that experience molecular biology through simulations or immersive VR, it makes sense now. The simulations also have a clear role from the perspective of engagement and getting the students to actively engage. They're very, very taken with the facilities now in the library and being able to visit there. It's really vital that you link and scaffold the VR simulations within the module content. It has to be relevant and relative. And pre-training is also important. The skill sets and working through VR, we don't take for granted that all the students are gaming. And that was a really important insight for us. But what was really pleasing to see was that the vast majority of students said that they gained new insights into the discipline and could scaffold knowledge from lectures onto the simulations. So all of this work is in, in submission now to uh, two particular journals. And what we have published back in 2021 was our roadmap for VR integration, where we believe that an introductory experience is very, very important. It has to be scaffolded at the lecture level. We see that the VR experience or the virtual reality experience must be linked back to lectures and to the prior learning of the students. Once they've engaged in that virtual reality experience, they can then build knowledge and skills development towards a performance of understanding. And we see that as just as crucial a component. The theory is one element of this and accessing these challenging or abstract concepts, getting new understanding or deep learning of the theory, but they need to be able to apply that understanding into something practical. And we've several uh, capstone experiences built in with this into our modules, including a molecular canvas. And of course, it's not linear. It is very much iterative. We see the iterative co-design of assessment being really, really important and a longitudinal approach to the scholarship of teaching. This field is moving very quickly. We need to keep up. So we see the entry point to accessing knowledge has to be universal. There must be multiple entry points to the technology and we have to move beyond the test and score principle, fostering deep learning. From the mental models, they have to be challenged and rebuilt. This is a new way of learning for students. Many, many of them have never seen beyond that small glimpse of the, of the photo, of the picture. They don't know what to expect when they get there. So universal design for learning is, uh, is really, really important. The spatial elements of this, Daniel was asking you to look at something massive. I'm asking you to look at something who's, that's so small you can't see. And student paste, you could put student paste in bold there. That was a really, really strong feedback from students. They really liked the idea of students paced, self-paced learning with no punishment if they make a mistake. And it is iterative. This is all about being open to feedback and continuously building and being open to the students as partners in assessment as well. It does not replace the teacher. It is teacher led or teacher guided. There's still a role there for individual learning and face to face. We're very keen on active learning experiences, whether group or individual, and the idea of capturing the experience and capstone experiences at the end of this process. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with a roadmap or a plan for how you actually deliver on these digital experiences and how you integrate them within your modules. Universal access is incredibly important. The student paste, as I said, is really important. The entry points. So how do we go about building that? Well, we have our building blocks. 
You have the disciplinary expertise, the people who are teaching and researching these who have the knowledge. You have the expertise in virtual reality development. It is here at UCC. It is in all many of our universities. We have the scholarship expertise and importantly, the support services. So disability support, the university library and what they're bringing to the table. You frame those abstract concepts, then bringing those building blocks together, both scientifically and from the perspective of VR. I mean, what does a plasmid sound like when two pieces come together? What would it feel like to touch it? We have no idea. So how do you develop that in VR? But if you can, you have a digitalized learning experience and you have the possibility of enabling the students to see that painting finally. You can't do this on your own. You have to be, we feel you have to be very open to engagement. It certainly has enhanced our experience over the last number of years at UCC, both with the supports around the UCC connected curriculum and the graduate attributes, and then nationally and internationally and at forests such as today. It all brings the community forward and advances our knowledge. So these are the amazing people who made all of this possible, including all of the anonymous students who took part in our work. And we thank the National Forum as well for recognizing us with their Delta Award uh, last year. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Jerry. That was fantastic.